welcome to Ekenic. In this video, we're gonna go over the steps on how to diagnose a hybrid vehicle. So a hybrid vehicle has several components and depending on how the hybrid vehicle is uh, designed, whether it's a mild hybrid or just a uh, hybrid, it might have a starter, regular starter, or it might not. It might use the hybrid system to start the gasoline engine. So in this case, we're gonna use the Ekenic scanner and we're gonna take a look at these various components and how you uh, how you read the codes from them. So what you wanna do is you wanna select the make and model. So you wanna, in this case, we're diagnosed with Mercedes. You wanna do smart VIN, you know, just read the VIN number of the vehicle and you're gonna tell us um, what make and model it is so we don't have to manually enter that. Okay, so now here we can see the control. You can do a quick scan, it goes through all the control modules and tells you what uh, what issue there is, but we know exactly what we're gonna look at. So the first one is the engine control unit, motor, motor electronics. This a lot of times will have codes that point to the, to the hybrid system failure, but we're gonna look at the actual hybrid uh, components themselves. So let's go to the first one, we're gonna click on SGEM, electronic control unit. And that part is this part right here. This is what uh, mounts on the side of the transmission. That part, and basically the side of the engine, right uh, below the, uh, in this case, it's right under the exhaust ma manifold. But that connects to electric motor that then turns the engine or generates power. So here we can do read codes. A lot of codes that you get on here. Uh, sometimes there might be no communication with an electric machine, a eh, or things of that nature. It just meaning it could be the problem that could be the problem could be the electric motor that's in the car, but it's unlikely to be the electric motor. Uh, more likely that could would be the part that fails. Here you have codes. These are stored. So uh, since they're stored low voltage, we can go ahead and erase them. Okay, but that's important there. You gotta cycle the ignition on and off a couple of times for that to take effect. But that's where you don't wanna read the codes. Let's go back though. I wanna look at, you can look at live data. So you have everything, all the sensors for, from that module. You can actually select them and look at data from that control module. And then you can do a control unit reset. Over here, just simply resets that module to uh, default settings. The next thing you wanna look at is if you go down to body, scroll down. We wanna look at the BMS or battery management system. And so there is the battery right there. As a cell, so the BMS is basically what runs the whole hybrid system. But that BMS, it's inside the hybrid battery. So it's not like something that you can, at least on this model, it's not something that you can easily repair uh, or, or take out. But uh, you can read codes. And if there's issues, you're gonna get some codes there, but you can go to live data, and this is something very important. We're gonna look at, go to gener general actual values, and you have all these values here. And you can look here at the charge uh, charge level, of the hybrid battery. We can look at voltage, the 12 volt system. Uh, you can look at status of the contactors. The contactors are in here. This is kind of basically uh, a switch it's a main relay but it basically operates um, turns on and off the hybrid battery so if if um if the key is turned off that the, the battery is disconnected if let's say if you um, power down the hybrid system that also does you know get disconnected but it's supposed to disconnect every time and every time every time you turn off the ignition when you turn the ignition back on these contactors uh, close, meaning that the battery is connected to the old hybrid system. If they show open, that means there is an issue. Uh, there is status, status of the interlock circuit. Interlock circuit 
is basically has a has a couple of wires that run through these cables and then the, it goes through to this connector it goes the same thing to the dc dc converter in there so if any of these you can see that there's if you look here you can see the big contact but if you look further inside there there's a couple of little terminals that plug into the battery and so they complete this circuit just just uh, for caution to make sure that no no those cables are disconnected so that's what interlock interlock circuit means uh, isolation resistance is another one that we're going to look at. It needs to be over 1,000 kilo ohms or 1 mega ohm. It's 5,000, which is good. Uh, what that does is it tests the hybrid system to make sure that there is no short to the 12 volt system because they are got to be completely di different circuits. So this is very important to take a look at that because uh, we've had cases when even technicians call and say, I don't have any fault codes, but my car still doesn't start. And sometimes that isolation resistance is too low and the car will not, the hybrid system will not allow the engine to start. And DC, DC converter is this part here. Converts the 12 volt to, to high voltage. That's used sometimes to charge the battery. It's a little too low, but remember the battery goes critically low that it will not charge it anymore. So if the battery drops under 25, 20%, it won't charge anymore. So this is the um, DC-DC converter right there. It's got some values as well. <coughs> and here we're looking at a car that's in good condition and running so you can get an idea of these values, what they need to be. You can read codes from there and clear that. Now this car has also um, uh, AC, AC, um, AC compressor that's part of the hybrid system. So you can also go to the AC control unit and read codes in there if you suspect any issues with that module as well. But these are the main components. So you got the battery or also the BMS, basically. That's what the brain that runs the whole hybrid system. You're gonna read codes from there and look at actual value. Uh, values that's very important and they got to be within range dc dc converter power electronic module it's usually one of those that goes bad sometimes you have, you have a fuse that runs on these cables and it could blow but that's an indication that something else is not quite right i mean the fuse is not gonna blow for no reason and that's it thank you for watching your canon